I have here a Seagate Exo Strive that is a Z model. It's got the little Z at the end. What does the Z mean? Zoned. It's like shingled magnetic recording, except it sucks way less than shingled magnetic recording. To be sure, continuous magnetic recording, CMR, still the most important, especially if you're a data hoarder. But I want to talk about shingled magnetic recording and how much it sucks less in 2025. Let's take a look. Oh, you wake up. I did a video about SAS Flash, serial attached SCSI. It's different than SATA. It looks like a SATA connector sometimes, sometimes not. And it's not NVMe, but you can pack a lot into a system. This is a little ITX system that's got two X8 slots. It's a bifurcation cable that's doing that. And I've got an LSI 9316i SAS controller in here, which will let me connect up to 16 disks. And I've got various kinds of flash disks here that are, you know, one, two, four, eight terabytes because that's enterprise surplus. But also enterprise surplus, thing, storage that's coming up cheap is this zoned stuff. Enterprises have been using zoned storage for like four or five years now, but with proprietary software to manage the drives. See, the difference in continuous magnetic recording and shingled magnetic recording is that with continuous magnetic recording, it works like it always has since the 1980s. Like you have a sector on disk, you write data to a sector on disk, and that's the end of it. The drive operates originally in 512 bytes at a time. Now on a more modern drives, 4K at a time, 4,000 bytes. Continuous magnetic recording means that the drive can write to any one of its sectors. There's, you know, a multi terabyte drive has a large number of sectors divided into four kilobyte chunks, 4,000 bytes, and that's how it does its writing. Shingled magnetic drives are like a shingle, like the shingle is the data storage, and one overlaps another one, overlaps another one, overlaps another one. And so if you want to write to something in the middle, you can't because there's overlap. And the groups of overlap are typically pretty big. In this case, this drive, it's 256 megabytes. So if I want to change just a few bytes inside a 256 megabyte cluster, what I have to do is read in that whole cluster, write it somewhere else, and change the thing that I want to change in the new cluster and then mark the old one as free, or read in the entire thing, make the little change that I want, and then write out the whole thing and call it a day. Um, that's not super fun, but it does let you get to higher data densities. This is how the first 32 terabyte drives that are available on the market are, and the 30 and 32 terabyte drives that are on Seagate's website, that's what they are, the Z. And there's, there's two kinds of shingled magnetic recording, drive managed and host managed. There was um, some fire and brimstone a few years ago when drive managed shingled magnetic recording came out because the drive sort of does the juggling to make it seem like it can still write in four kilobyte chunks, but it actually can't. And so it runs out of buffer really quickly when you have a lot of random writes. It doesn't behave well. I mean, mechanical hard drives aren't all that fast for random writing in the first place or random reading for that matter. And with shingled magnetic recording, when the drive is trying to manage writing in those 256 gigabyte chunks at a time, it really doesn't do a super good job doing that. I mean, it takes about one second. These drives read and write at about 250 to 275 megabytes per second. And so it takes about one second to read in and do the thing that it's supposed to do in order to write it out again. That's why whenever you're building a NAS, all the advice, everything you see is CMR, go for CMR, continuous magnetic recording. The data density is such that the drive physically can do random reading and writing much more efficiently, but the drive costs more because the data has to be more spread out on the disk. With this shingling approach, you can pack in more data because the data is physically close together, but the, the trade-off is that you have to rewrite so much of it at a time if you just want to change one little piece of it. Now, most of your NASs are really not doing a lot of random writing. I and mean, if you're running virtual machines and things like that, it's worth setting up another volume, even if it's just with small SSDs versus running that on mechanical storage. For data hoarding and uh, media, you're not really rewriting that a lot. At least I hope you're not. I hope you're building archives that last for years and decades. And for that use case, these are pretty good. These are made for the enterprise to, you know, store backups and archives and things like that. And so it's like, let's write 500 gigabytes to the drive. Let's erase 500 gigabytes from the drive. Let's write a terabyte to the drive. Let's erase a terabyte from the drive. And these 
shingled magnetic recording drives generally are okay for that. Now, when the drive is managing its shingling, the drive doesn't really have a lot of computational horsepower and it leaves a lot to be desired. And I think that's still true. This option is host managed. These Z series drives mean that it's still shingling, but it says that the host has to manage that. And in our case, BTRFS is managing it on a relatively recent kernel. Now there's a lot of bugs around that in Linux proper, but BTRFS is one option. There's also ZoneFS, which is a strong-ish secondary recommendation from me, especially if you're going to DIY something. There's also a wonderful set of patches for XFS that will enable uh, zoned drives to work properly. But in this case, we're just running BTRFS. I'm only running it on a single drive because I only have a single drive. I want to do a video on this and sort of, you know, gauge your engagement to say, hey, uh, what do you think about these? These have started to pop up on eBay and the surplus market and deal hounds and everybody like that may be tempted that at the end of the rainbow is a lot of cheap, inexpensive storage. And that is true, but there are also a lot of gotchas. But I also was surprised that this wasn't unusable. I was expecting it to be basically unusable, and it's not actually unusable. There are a lot of unusable scenarios, like RAID actually even is a little dicey. I think BTRFS RAID 1 works properly at this point, but I'm not even sure about that because I don't have a second zoned drive to fully confirm that. I'd like to. I'm pretty sure that it'll work, though, at least in 2025. On older kernels and things like that, maybe not. But like RAID 5, not a great idea. You can run, uh, there's a disk mapper thing for Linux and you can make this drive appear like it's a normal uh, non-zoned drive and then that makes it work with Linux MD. That might be a, a path to RAID. ZFS, I think ZFS is right out. ZFS is not designed for, for zoned drives. But there's a little how-to on the forum for what I did to get this set up and just made a BTRFS file system on it which detected the drive. And also some commands you can run to make sure that the drive is properly detected by the Linux kernel as its own drive. And there's a lot of gotchas. One is if you try to use this kind of a drive, especially if it's a SAS drive, because you can get the Z drives in SAS or a SATA flavor. This particular one is SATA. If you get a SAS drive and you use it with a SAS controller, it doesn't always work through the controller. This LSI 9316i needs a relatively recent firmware in order for it to work. Otherwise, the drive is not detected properly. It's just detected as a generic SCSI device. Most motherboards, like motherboard SATA, it'll work okay with that. So that's good. But that wasn't the case even a couple of years ago, like two, three years ago. It was very hard to get, you know, the hardware plumbing, the hardware path for uh, zoned drives to work and be detected properly. Windows doesn't really detect the drive. You can't really use or do anything with the drive. Um, sometimes you get these drives and they're completely blank. And in that case, you have to use some low-level SCSI generics, some SG commands in order to initialize the drives because the drive will report that it has zero byte zones. In this case, this drive reports that it has like 700,250 megabyte zones and each zone has to be rewritten. So the operating system has some visibility into the size and location of the shingles. Now for reading, it's fine. You don't have to read 256 megabytes in at a time. And in fact, when you have good shingled support, I've also included FIO, which is a benchmarking utility for the mounted file system, BTRFS, and the performance there. And I'm actually shocked at how good the read and write IOPS are because the aerial density is a little higher than a continuous magnetic recording drive. These are actually slightly better numbers than an equivalent drive for the reads than you would have with a continuous magnetic recording drive, which I found kind of interesting. The random write IOPS is still a little disappointing. It's only able to manage uh, a relatively small number of I.O. operations per second, like mm, on the order of like 40 to 80. And if you have very small <laughs> I.O. operations, it's going to be even less. But when we're talking about media, where you're storing recordings and movies, TV shows, whatever, and they're, you know, on the order of a gigabyte each, and it's mostly archival, you're mostly doing reads, this is fantastic. This is great. This is exactly what you need. These, the, the IOPS here is fine. The data density is fine. You just need a mechanism that will let you take a pool of 4, 8, 16, 20 of these and turn it into a large storage pool. I'm here to tell you that that's not here yet. If you wanted to have a pool of, uh, you know, like two, a RAID 1 of zoned magnetic drives, I think that would be reasonable. Even if BTRFS RAID 1 doesn't work correctly, uh, we can hack together a script that will keep two drives in sync. Um, 
and I think Unraid will probably support this, so maybe that's something that I'll dig into in a in a video that's coming. I'm not a bit bashful about hacking on Unraid. I certainly wouldn't be the first time that I've done that. And so I think we could hack in <laughs> whatever we need to get reasonable performance from zoned drives out of Unraid if it's not there. But I gotta get my hands on some more some more zoned disks. So I may get uh, may get creative with that, may partner up with server part deals. We'll see. Server Part Deals definitely has some really good deals right now on flash storage. You should check them out for sure, uh, just for fun, because then you can, you know, if you're dealing with flash, you don't have to deal with all this nonsense. That's sort of insane. But, you know, two drives, relatively low power, 20 terabytes of storage for media is nothing to sneeze at. That's it's quite good. So, yeah, I'm surprised that it works as well as it does. There are still a lot of gotchas. There's still a lot of caveats. But there is starting to be a little bit of gold at the end of the rainbow. If, you know, the drive is not significantly cheaper than a CMR equivalent, always go for the CMR equivalent. The, the, the continuous magnetic recording drive is going to be way less headache, way easier to get working. And if you're, unless you're masochistic, just go for the continuous magnetic recording drive. But it works. I'm surprised at how well it works with BTRFS. I filled up the drive all the way, 20 terabytes full. The only thing weird that these drives do sometimes is when they start to get full, the last 500 gigabytes or so, the drive will slow way down. It'll, it'll slow down to about 15 megabytes per second, read and write. And that is because the drive is juggling uh, garbage collection and, and a lot of other things because it's very, very full, or BTRFS is doing that. In fact, in our case, the BTRFS system logs will print messages telling you that it's like it's consolidating metadata or it had a bunch of rewrites and it journaled them here and it's working backward from the journal to update the actual blocks on disk. So BTRFS has quite a lot of changes under the hood in order to support this use case for host managed uh, drives, host managed zoned drives. Um, and I think it's sort of interesting that they're, they're moving away from the shingling terminology because everybody's experiences with the first generation shingling drives, which again, the drive tries to manage the shingling and takes the control out of the operating system. That is still an objectively worse experience than this. I mean, the zoning thing is basically the same. It's just that it's now handled by your operating systems, handled by the Linux kernel, which is far more sane and leads to a far less awful result for you, the end user, than letting that be managed by the drive. And so this was actually a pretty reasonable result. And the guide, the how-to, will walk you through the setup if you are interested in being on the bleeding edge or helping debug this or helping make a suitable RAID system that can handle 5, 8, 10, 20 of these zoned drives. Now, uh, the other difference with these being host managed is that you cannot use them unless your software is explicitly built to support zoned drives. So again, there's another caution. You can't use it with a, a, a SAS controller that doesn't know about them. You can't use it with software that doesn't know about them. You literally have to have everything plumbed in. Theoretically, the Linux kernel has supported this since version five, but I'll tell you as a practical matter, it hasn't really. It's really been like the last years or so of, uh, versions of uh, kernel six and also relatively recent drive firmware because a lot of drives that these were set up for were designed for appliances and they were really only bug tested for the appliances because the margins have been razor thin in mechanical hard drive, the mechanical hard drive industry for a long time. And so even the host managed zone drives that worked were kind of purpose built for like one thing. But generally in 2025, that's not quite as true as it was. So these are my findings from having worked on a zoned magnetic drive, Seagate Exos, to be specific. But if you got the hookup on more zoned drives, especially more recent zoned drives, and you want me to do more testing or plugging in or setting up or how to or whatever, let me know. But I'm here to tell you, this was surprisingly serviceable. You could get it done, especially if you can get a deal on these and you're willing to jump through the hoops that I've outlined. I'm Wittle, this is level one. If you want more info, it's on the forum. I'm hanging out on the forum if you have any questions. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.